Here's a story from the New York Times. Yemen's Houthi militia claims to have launched an, uh, launched an attack on Israel. The Israeli military said it had thwarted a batch of aerial threats, but did not say who was behind them. Yemen's Houthi militia claimed an attempted attack on southern Israel in, uh, on Tuesday, saying it had launched a large batch of ballistic and cruise missiles, as well as drones toward Israeli targets. The Iran-backed militia carried out the attempted assault in response to what it called brutal Israeli-American aggression in Gaza. The military spokesman, in, spokesper, uh, spokesman Yahya Saraya said on the social media platform X, Mr. Saraya said the attack was the third operation conducted by the Houthis in support of our per persecuted brothers in Palestine and threatened further missile and drone assaults. The Times could not independently verify the claims. On Tuesday, the Israeli, Israeli military said it, it, its aerial defense system had intercepted a surface-to-surface -surface missile fired towards Israel from the area of the Red Sea. It said it has also intercepted other aerial threats in the area, none of which entered Israeli territory. Now, now here's, here's the big concern, I suppose. If you're looking at this through the lens of uh, the Ben Shapiro perspective, his view is that if the U.S. does not get involved and stamp out aggression toward or assist in the stamping out of aggression towards Israel, we are going to see an escalation of these kinds of assaults, which results in Israel taking the nuclear option, perhaps quite literally resulting in a World War Three scenario when uh, basically the idea is there's two ideas. One. In response to a serious military threat that, that could end Israel, Israel says, fire everything we've got. The second scenario, similar is, Israel facing its demise says, we're going to fire everything everywhere, and we're going to force the intervention of other countries to stop this conflict. Yeah, I mean, it's the exact inverse of what Shapiro is saying. The more we do, the more we intervene, the, more, the greater the threat of this turning into a, a wider uh, conflict. More countries that will get in, drawn in. You know, you have, uh, of course, everything points back to Iran here, supposedly, with Hezbollah and now the Houthis. And so we're looking at the possibility of drawing other uh, actors into this. And the United States is seemingly itching to attack Iran. And that's, that's a problem. So, you know, the arming and funding of Israel is outrageous. This is drawing all these actors out. So we're actually, our interventions are causing this, uh, this conflict to escalate. So the, the uh, I guess my question is, if the U.S. does nothing, do you think these other countries, these Ar 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 Iranian-backed militias in Iran, do you think they just ignore Israel? Or do you think they attack Israel? I mean, if the U.S. does nothing but fund them to the tune of $3.8 billion a year and now another $14 billion, uh, then, of course, there's going to be our involvement. We're already implicated in the whole, in the whole conflict because of the uh, arms and funding we've been giving them over all this time. So, yeah, we need to re retrench. We need to pull back all of our funding. And, yeah, we would see that if we didn't intervene in all these conflicts, there would be less conflict in the world, and especially you, the Middle East. Do you think that if the United States were not giving uh, funding giving weapons and essentially essentially it's probably just giving weapons that the u.s pays uh weapon manufacturers for but if the mm. u.s were not and the israelis were just buying weapons from u.s manufacturers do you think that the the houthis in iran would look at it any differently because in my opinion i don't think that the people the countries and and states that don't like israel would see a distinction mm. even if we weren't giving it away if we were like look u.s firms are allowed to sell you like raytheon mm -hmm. and boeing can sell you weapons but we're not paying for it i don't really strongly believe that the the iranians are going to consider that a, a, a they'll call it a difference without a distinction well know? i don't know we, we, we're giving them the money and then they yeah. buy the arms that's how it works 3.8 billion a year so i think that you know if if in, i don't think first of all israel would be able to afford as much arms if it weren't for these outlandish uh grants every year and uh then add 14 billion on top of it and you've got the united states totally implicated so yeah i mean i don't see how uh that helps anything at all and so, yeah, if they were just buying their arms and, and largely from the United States, perhaps those countries would still consider the U.S. implicated. But th there's no doubt that our, you know, that we're fully involved in this because of that. And right now, U.S. rockets and bombs are falling on children in Palestine. This is an outrage. And this is, should be something that we completely oppose. Uh, it has no we have no business doing this. And it's, I think it's blood on our hands, frankly. Yeah, I agree. The U.S. shouldn't fund it, but I, I just am not 
I'm not convinced that other countries would see a distinction. Let's, I think let's that, I try think it, it just, for once. We I haven't would love it. I'm we on, haven't tried this ever. You know, so <laughs> why why don't we give it a try? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm not I'm not trying to push back against the I, idea. Actually, yeah. I think we tried it during the uh, the Barbary Wars. The U.S. <laughs> the U.S. was kind of like, "Hey, can we not go to war with you guys? Like, what's going on?" And then they were like, "Nah, we're we're gonna keep stealing." Food and burning <laughs> there was no down. Israel back then, but yeah. No, but yeah, my they, point is like, it was only the founding fathers who were like, "The United States will not be involved in these foreign conflicts." And then you get to uh, you know late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, and the politicians then are like, "I think the U.S. should be involved in foreign affairs and just start setting up military conquests. Why not?" And there you have it. And now we have eight hundred bases around the world. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one in Israel, by the way. Apparently, there's a secret base in Israel right now. It's called 152. It's this very, uh, you know, nondescript name, and we're actually, we have forces located in there. They're saying it's just uh, living accommodations, but it it, it has uh, U.S. forces in it. Uh, This has been revealed. So, Site 512, is that Yes, that's it. Yeah. So we have, this is a, this is the intercept. Right. U.S. quietly expands secret military base in Israel. Government documents point to construction at a classified U.S. base offer rare hints about little noted U.S. military presence near Gaza. And there was there was some reporting, hard to know what's true, claiming that U.S. forces were actually in Gaza during the invasion and may be there now. And uh, perhaps it's very hard to tell. I mean, all this is kept secret. These two thousand troops that were sent over. They're they're sent to an undisclosed location. We don't know where they are. The Defense Department will not say where they are. So I mean, for for certain military reasons, that makes sense. But we we still don't know. They may be in Israel. What what tro- I'm not familiar with the with the the troop de- deployment. I mean, I know that there's two Marine Expeditionary units that are with some mm-hmm. carrier groups, but I don't know about. Yeah, there's uh, two thousand troops that have been sent over. Two thousand, inf- you know, I don't know if they're in- infantry or Marines or what- whatever they are. They're there. And in the region, but they won't tell us where they are in the region. I bet they're in Iraq. Northern and then, Iraq, of course, we Syria. have two aircraft carriers in the uh, in the Mediterranean. And, uh, you know, we have uh, tons of arms just loaded around. So I think they're trying to bait the U.S. into a conflict. If something gets struck, we're going to go in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, now with the U.S. hostages, you ha- do you have the <laughs> argument that, oh, the reason we have Delta forces on the ground yeah. is because of the hostages? The, the yeah. presence of 2,500 U.S. troops in Iraq and another 900 in eastern Syria, both on missions against the Islamic State. This is, uh, I'm not looking great. Trump tried bringing them back. Yeah. But don't you think that, um, or what, are your, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, a lot of people say that uh, if the U.S. is not, if the U.S. just retracts everything, mm-hmm. China just sweeps in. I don't agree. I mean, I, they, they moved into uh, Afghanistan. Well, then, I mean, the, you know, the thing is, we're in terms of China, what we're doing is provoking them as well, because we're talking about now sending uh, military aid to Taiwan. This is an utter provocation. So we're drawing China into conflict, seemingly on purpose. And I don't think China is going to try to uh, take, first of all, they don't have the military power to do it. They do not have the military power to take over the United States or invade us or anything like that. No, but I mean, they'll start... They'll they'll grow that power. They'll move into Central America. There's already concerns they they're going to try and make a move. They were trying to build the Nicaraguan Canal to gain control or or at least compete mm-hmm. with the Panama Canal. People were uh, there's a rumor about their them trying to gain control of the Panama Canal. Mm-hmm. They'll uh, they're going to move. They're already moving into Africa and South America. Yeah, I mean, I mean this, these are not military conquests though. And no, it's more like you know the West uses the IMF. It's the right. Belt and Road Initiative, right. and uh, this is how they're growing their soft power. And, you know, frankly, we should open up trade with China. We, we are now embargoing their uh, chips. We're, we refuse to send certain chips to China. What's this going to do? This is already hurting our economy, and what it'll do for them is they'll just go elsewhere for these chips. Uh, they'll, they'll make so them themselves or get, get them elsewhere. We're, we're not sending them chips, is what you're saying. We refuse to send them certain chips, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a concern, though, that they're reverse engineering a lot of our intellectual property, a lot of our technology, but they're mm. also sending us compromised electronics. That was a big story a few years ago mm-hmm. where they're like, your toaster could be broadcasting a signal and you wouldn't know and it's stealing mm-hmm. your information. And I, I don't think China's our real, our real uh, threat, the number one primary enemy, frankly. Who is? The state, the our United government. United. Our government. Our government. Well, elaborate. Why? I mean, <laughs> our government has, look, who has, who's responsible for more deaths of Americans than our government. Uh, we have sent more people over to die. 
than any country has killed. So we're actually provo provoking other countries. We're entering in all these military expeditions. And in that way, the state itself is more responsible for U.S. deaths than China, Iran, uh, Russia, uh, or uh, North Korea combined. You know, I thought about this. And I was thinking that it's, it seems like there's an occupying force that's been controlling this country mm -hmm. because the American people don't want war. Right. And they never want war. Almost never. And yet here we are consistently going into wars without having declared war on anybody. And then I think, no, it's probably better to just say we were sold out by our politicians who continue to sell us out. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that we're occupied. It's that uh, we have a fractured uh, government and a and and corrupt politicians well I don't everyone agrees with Have well i don't know how fractured it is because when it comes to war and military uh expeditions and and foreign policy this is a uniparty they're not even there's no distance between these people it does seem to be like the only time they ever actually agree on anything is when it's going to war in other countries right, right. have there been polls done recently about what the american public's thoughts are on war right now given obviously we know what the american people think of war in ukraine but have there been studies or any type of polls that have been done talking about what they think about military intervention in israel interestingly there was a poll done on biden's approvability rating which fell by 11 percent uh, among democrats so that's a good sign so it went from 86 to 75 percent and for uh, arab americans it fell like uh from like 58 to 17 percent in in a matter of weeks so uh, interestingly, there is a divide in the uh, in the population in terms of support for Biden, uh, because, you know, I mean, the le uh, a lot of the left doesn't want this uh, conflict. Now, they are hypocrites because they were fully in support of the Ukraine war. Mm -hmm. And the right is also hypocritical because now they're in support of this war in <laughs> Israel, but they weren't in support of the war in Ukraine. So and also in hindsight, they oppose the uh, Iraqi war. Isn't that convenient? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast I. IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.